CataractCoach.com, a bad incision leads to iris damage. An extra wide incision is too leaky, and that gives you anterior chamber instability. We've got a resident who's operating here. We're going to keep him anonymous. And now this is three times normal speed. We'll slow down the video for the main incision. So there's the parallel, which looks good. Going to put the viscoelastic in the eye, dispersive viscoelastic coming up shortly. Remember, we want a normal physiologic IOP, about 20 millimeters of mercury. That allows to make a better incision. So check that pressure, get it normal. That looks great. Now here comes the main incision, and this is going to be the problem. So slow down the video. And the issue is the resident is going to push the keratome into the eye way too far. And then when retracting the keratome, He's going to saw to the right and enlarge the incision. So here comes the incision. Looks okay for now. Not too bad. I'll take it. But now watch. As the keratome goes in the eye, watch carefully. Why go in so far? And you saw that sawing motion laterally to the right-hand side. Now the incision is too wide. So what's the problem of an incision that's too wide? Well, you're going to get anterior chamber instability. Right? Remember, there's one source of fluid going in the eye. That's the balanced salt solution bag or bottle. There are two sources of fluid outflow. One is what you're aspirating through the phaco tip. The second is what's leaking from your incisions. So he's going to have a lot more incision leakage, and that's going to cause instability. So the inflow is not going to be able to keep up with the outflow. So what can you do here? You could get a little piece of a Wexel sponge and kind of wedge it in the side of the incision as you put the phaco probe in. You could try to put a suture to the side of the incision. You could increase your parameters, increase the bottle height or infusion pressure, decrease the aspiration flow rate to make up for it. Remember, you have to balance that inflow fluid versus the outflow. And in this case, there's going to be too much outflow because the outflow is going to leak through that incision. So this is a very unfortunate thing. So you really have to take into account the incision is so important. That sets up the entire case because it determines fluidics. And that's a really important part of our surgery, maintaining that balance in such a small anterior chamber. Now, what's going to end up happening is the resin is going to have an anterior chamber that's very unstable. You're going to get iris that's going to prolapse. It's going to be uncontrolled here. The pupil is going to come down. You just know what's going to happen. And let's see how we get through it. So you see the leakage. Look at the main incision. How much extra fluid is leaking out of that main incision? That's a tremendous amount of fluid leakage. You don't want that. You see that incision now? Now look at it. When he came out of the eye with the keratome, sawing to the right, widened up so much. Look at the phaco tip as it goes in the incision. Lots of fluid leakage. Now, for this part, it's okay. This is making a groove, kind of sculpting a groove in the center of the nucleus. That works okay, and that nucleus can be split. That's a pretty good job. But the problem is going to be higher flow settings. Where we're trying to bring like this, a stop and chop, trying to bring the pieces up out of the bag. And so... Again, we're showing you the video at fast three times speed because I want to show you the whole case here. And I don't want you guys to be uh, bored sitting here watching a 20-minute or 30-minute case here. Look, I already have iris prolapse. So now with that anterior chamber instability, the iris is going to prolapse more and more and more. And what's going to happen? The pupil will become smaller and smaller and smaller. You know where this is going. So that's a good move, getting the nucleus up out of the bags. So now all you have to do is, oh, don't touch the iris. All you have to do is take this out. So taking your time, removing those pieces... Now you have to stay in the center. Look how the iris is peaked towards the incision. That's because the iris is prolapsing out of that incision because the fluidic flow. Too much flow. Flu oh, there we just nailed the iris. There, you again nailed the iris. Oh, boy. Remember how delicate and wimpy that iris is. Oh, boy. Remember, that can't be undone. Now, fortunately, this is a very sweet, kind, and forgiving patient. And this patient also has a nice dark brown iris. So when you look at the patient at conversation distance... This corectopia or iris defect is not that visible. So that looks pretty good. So now continuing the case here. There we go. We've got to take out the rest of the cortex. I like the split here to the bimanual approach. The bimanual approach is great because it allows us to get underneath that smaller pupil. And again, avoid grabbing that iris. Oh, don't, don't touch the iris. Keep that aspiration port deeper in the eye. You see that iris just wants to prolapse now more and more. So it look, looks like the case is going to be able to be finished normally. Putting some more viscoelastic here. Let's see if they get the lens in the capsular bag. Certainly put in a, a suture in the uh, incision at the end of the case. 
it's debatable whether or not you should put a suture to try to repair the iris defect. If you're a beginning surgeon, you can probably just leave it be. And then if you need to, come back at a later date with a more senior surgeon. If you're a more senior surgeon, yeah, you could quickly put a, a four-throw pupiloplasty suture in to close that inferior defect there. So this is a tough case. I think it's an important lesson to be learned here. And that lesson is you really have to be careful in making the incision. The incision sets up the remainder of the case. Now you see this patient has this permanent iris defect, this corectopia. And that's, of course, iatrogenic. So passing the suture, and again, let's see the sutures going in. That's reasonable. Remember, suturing, that's what you got to practice yourself in the wet lab before coming to the operating room. It is a disservice to you if you have not done 500 sutures of 10 nylon prior to coming to the wet lab. You're only hurting yourself, believe me. You need to balance out your, your social life and your, your TV watching and your extracurricular activities with putting in the effort to make yourself a better surgeon. So there you go, end of the case. Again, we'll leave that iris defect alone. If we need to, we can come back at a later date and repair it with a more senior surgeon. Woo, good lesson to be learned. Let's look at the post-op of this patient. There it is, post-op. So again, the lens in the bag, nicely centered, the incision sutured shut, but of course there is that inferior iris defect. Luckily, this patient was very kind and, un and um, unsymptom asymptomatic and very forgiving. And the patient is not at this point scheduled to go back for an iris repair. And that may change the future. Thanks for watching and I hope you really enjoyed the important lesson in this video.